I want to introduce our next speaker, who is Charlotte McLean Malapthal. Is she's a disability advisor to the East Asian and Pacific area for the World Bank. She trained as a human rights lawyer at the University of Warsaw at Cornell Law School in New York. In 1999, President Nelson Mandela appointed her to the South African Human Rights Commission. She was reappointed by President Mbeki in 2002. In 2004, on leave of absence, she joined the World Bank in Washington, D.C as a senior operations specialist. Over the years, Charlotte has worked primarily in the area of human rights, with a particular interest in marginalised groups, children, women and people with disabilities. She has served as an expert in a number of UN committees in human rights issues. And in the process, she was to help develop a Convention for People with Disabilities. She served on the editorial board of the UN Study on Violence Against Children, and until recently, she was the Deputy Chairperson of the Council for the University of South Africa. Would you please welcome Charlotte McLean Naupo. Uh. Good evening and thank you very much. I'd like to first of all thank very much the organize, organizers of One Just World uh, for the invitation to be here tonight. And to also really thank, rudely interrupted, for their wonderful lead in peace. It was, it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, what I'd like to do is to, to just share with you some ideas and to begin to think about issues around why disability matters. I think it's important for us to recognize that people with disabilities constitute the largest minority in the world. As Bob said, they roughly constitute between 10 to 12 percent of the global population, and as many as one-fourth of all households have a member with a disability. I think it's also important for us to recognize that people with disabilities, or the majority of people with disabilities, live in developing countries, and that disability prevalence is expected to grow with the aging population. I think what's particularly important and is characteristic of people with disabilities throughout the world is that people with disabilities often lack voice, and therefore don't have access to public discourse. And therefore, their needs are frequently denied and ignored. Their exclusion from participation in economic, civil, social, and judicial life is often caused not by their disability, but by the fact that these places, institutions, people are inaccessible, ill-informed and not willing to accept diversity. And I think it's important for us to recognize that because I think often we think of the issue or the problem being with the person with the disability, when in fact the barrier is often a barrier that can be removed. Now, what happens as a result of this exclusion is that it leads to the loss and inefficient use of human capital the lower potential of individuals and in national productivity, and very often the, de the denial of human rights of the person with a disability. We now have substantial evidence that indicates that disability increases poverty, and poverty aggravates disability. And with this in mind, we know for a fact that if we don't begin to include people with disabilities, we will not be able to reach the eight millennium development goals. I think it's also important for us to pause and think about the ongoing fi financial crisis that Bob alluded to. And I think that its negative impact on the world's economy and employment and incomes of the population have a potential of hurting 
people with disabilities extensively, particularly given that people with disabilities are amongst the poorest of the poor. Well, the next slide says, um, disability is not a rare event, but rather a common part of, of, the, of the life cycle. And I think that that's really an important point to think about, that disability is part of the diversity of humankind, and that there are no communities where there aren't people with disabilities. And that when we think about people living with disabilities, we need to recognize that people are born with disabilities, people acquire disabilities, I acquired a disability. Um, disabilities can, lack, can arise from malnutrition, from the lack of quality health care, including the inability to access preventable medicines, from chronic conditions, from HIV and AIDS, from aging, conflict, and there are a whole range of other factors that contribu contribute to disability. So I think it's important for us to recognize that it really is part of our life cycle. Okay, the limited access to human capital formation, economic opportunities, and social life disproportionately affect people with disabilities. And again, we know that it's not the ability of the person to participate in social and economic life. It's not their function or their medical limitation, functional limitation, but it rather reflects the lack of inadequate access to social services, to human capital formation, and to labor market opportunities. And we need to constantly drive home that point that the problem is not with the individual, but it really is within society and can often be removed. This exclusion affects not only the person with a disability, but often forces their family members to forego productivity activities and to stay at home and provide care. And in this regard, I think it's important to highlight that this care is often carried out by women or by the girl child, leading to further exclusion of women in society. And these factors in tandem translate into the loss of human capital and the foregone GPD, uh, G, GDP worldwide of about five to seven percent. So I think it's quite clear that inclusion makes economic sense. I'm happy to say that global awareness of the importance of addressing disability within development is increasing. And in this regard, I'd like to commend AusAid for their disability policy. <clears throat> 